Well, hello, lovely humans. Welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, we're going to go over some unique ceremony ideas that I've seen to help you jazz up your wedding day and make it the talk of the town, the event of the year, nay, the century, that no one will forget. I don't know why I started talking like that. <laughs> So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Now, whether you've been to one wedding or a million weddings, it's understandable that you would want your event to stand out in one way or another. You're super excited, you're getting married to your favorite person in the entire world, but also you want to make it really fun for your guests as well, and you wouldn't mind if your event stood out a little bit and stuck in people's memories because you did something kind of fun that they could never forget. And these are not necessarily in order of like best to worst, or worst to best or whatever, but it's more like as you go through the ceremony kind of thing. So idea number one, have a pre-ceremony cocktail hour. Eh? Eh? Hear me out. Okay. So I know a lot of people do welcome drinks, but what if you did like welcome charcuts, you know, like some cheese and some noms and something to sip on as like a means of welcoming people. Now I haven't seen this happen a whole lot. In fact, I've only had two events in my entire career do this, but it was so great and it completely set the mood. One of them was at the Carondelet house in LA. Love that venue, it's so moody, it's so good. You know I love a good exposed brick. And the couple actually joined, no, just the groom, just the groom joined them for pre-cocktail hour. Did the bride? I don't know, it's been a long time, I don't recall, but I know the groom was there. <laughs> So that way, as guests were invited in, they had been dodging LA traffic, it was a Saturday night, it was chaotic. And they got in, were welcomed with delicious food, fantastic drinks, and just what a way to set the tone for the, what the rest of the evening was gonna look like. You know what I'm saying? The second one that did it, it was actually a backyard wedding, and it was honestly one of my favorite backyard events to date because of this one particular element. They had this entire spread set up right next to the ceremony space, encouraged guests to grab a glass of wine. I think it was the ant put together like a whole charcuterie for people to come and just kind of pick at if they wanted to for the hour before the ceremony started, which because this wedding was actually in Temecula, there is terrible traffic in this area of California. And I mean, really bad. Like, I don't know what the road developers were doing when they designed it, but like, <laughs> you could be stuck out there if you hit five o'clock on a Friday and it was indeed five o'clock on a Friday. So by having an earlier cocktail hour, people could leisurely show up, come enjoy some libations, have a glass of wine with them as they sat down for the ceremony. It just set the tone for what the rest of the evening was gonna look like. It is an extra cost, but if you wanna be unique and you can find a creative way of feeding people and offering them something to drink, it could be as simple as a welcome drink or it could be something a little bit more full as in like a full cocktail hour, I would consider doing it because not a lot of people have it, but when you do, it's something that your guests will most certainly never forget. Idea number two, go for unique escort cards. Now, if you don't know what an escort card is, it's usually like your name at table 12. You know, it's like a little, it's literally a card intended to escort you to your table, hence escort card. And these you could potentially see before the ceremony even starts. That's why I'm including them here, but this could technically fall into the cocktail hour time frame wherever you happen to be placing your escort cards. Consider instead of doing like a plain, simple escort card, doing a unique favor or something that could aid them during the ceremony. It could be chapstick, it could be a fan, or it could be a consumable like a tequila shot uh, or a cookie. Or as I've seen uniquely done, writing the person a thank you note. Now, if you're doing this for 150 people, that could be a little bit difficult, right? Like that's, that's that's a lot. That's, that's a lot of thank yous. That's hand cramping, okay? Especially if you're gonna send thank you notes after the wedding for gifts and stuff. That's a lot of thanking people. Don't feel like you have to do that, but if it's intimate enough or if you have enough words, Mm -hmm. or very strong hands, that is one way to set the tone and really set the precedent for what you want this day to be about. Thank you for being here. Thank you for who you've been in my life, yada, yada. Like you helped this relationship grow. You watched me grow up. Um, thank you. So I would love to honor you tonight as well. Thank you for coming to this event and being a part of our love story but sharing a unique detail with each and every single thank you note. I've also seen this done before where you have the person's photo instead of just an escort card, but that would require that you have a photo of absolutely everybody, which might make it a little bit difficult unless you get sleuthy or you stalk people on Instagram and then steal their photos. That's legal, right? Idea number three, hear me out because y'all, <laughs> I feel like I say this for like every unique wedding video, Mad Lips, okay? And I do not understand, I don't know why Mad Lips has such a chokehold on me um, <laughs> whenever I talk about these, but if you had a Mad Lib program instead of a regular program, talk about a fantastic way of getting your guests to talk with one another. You know, hey, do you know a plural noun? Great. 
Thank you. You know, it's it's a great way of taking something that is typical and normal and turning it into something unexpected. What a refreshing way to start off your wedding day for your guests. That little unique perspective, that something different that they're like, huh, I haven't seen that before because they haven't seen my videos and they haven't seen me talking about Mad Libs, okay? So do it because they're going to think you're creative and you came up with it on your own. Or if you don't want to do Mad Libs, you can turn the program into an I Spy or How Well Do You Know the Couple. Just something interactive to do before the ceremony starts that, again, sets the tone for the rest of the day. Next idea for having a unique ceremony is picking some decent music. Wait, no, I shouldn't say decent music because uh, I love me a good bridal march, right? And Vitamin String Quartet cannot cover a single song that I wouldn't like, okay? But if you really want to set the tone and create a slightly different mood or a different atmosphere, consider playing different music. Surprise people with some Spice Girls, you know, before you walk down the aisle. Or keep it upbeat with some jazz or maybe you and your fiance really like ACDC or the Beatles. Have that playing as your pre-ceremony music. Shake things up, switch it around, try something different. You can, of course, use Vitamin String Quartet, which I love. It sets the tone. It's very sweet. It's romantic, but they do really cool covers. And you can use the Bridal March to come in. But if you decide to turn it on its head and get a little bit creative with this, you can really tell your unique love story in a completely different way. For example, our wedding party at, my, at our wedding walked down to an acoustic cover of You're the One That I Want from Greece, And it was... You guys, it was so cute. I Years later, I still love that we chose that. I love the mood that it set. I loved watching people's faces be like, what is that? Is that, is this a cover of Grease with an acoustic guitar? That's not, that's, they didn't say all that out loud, but they said that with their faces. And I remembered it and it was important to me. Another idea is to have a unique efficient. Now we had one that I will, well, we've had multiple. <laughs> <laughs> We've had lots of efficients, but there was one that I will never forget. She literally had like a beehive wig that was like a foot above her person. Y'all, it was huge. It was like the biggest wig, but of course I'll never forget it, that she had like an alter ego and she would like dress up for this. And it honestly made, this was a, one of those weddings where they were super thoughtful and really unique with all these details. The couple walked in together. Um, they walked out together. They just did a lot of unique touches. They didn't have any florals at all whatsoever. They had a unique efficient. So this one, of course, they did multiple things that helped it stand out, but I will never forget watching this woman fasten 12 inches of hair atop her cranium. It just, she was super unique. At the end of the ceremony, she actually ended up playing them a song. I didn't know she was going to do this. Fun fact, they didn't have a DJ and they didn't have any dancing, which I always think about this wedding when people talk about like no dance weddings. We did a video on this recently though. So check that one out if you want to down below. But uh, so they had me pressing play on a song. <laughs> on a phone connected to to a speaker and I press play when they pr were pronounced because they were supposed to turn um and then the efficient pulled out a guitar so maybe if you're gonna go for a unique efficient cool hair is cool but just make sure they communicate to your coordinator <laughs> they're gonna play a little something you know out of nowhere so she's not playing a song for you over the top of this song that your efficient's performing. Now, I love the personalization that you can bring in with this. It can be an uncle, it could be a friend, it could be a college professor, it could be um, someone in a Barney costume. Don't do that. I mean, you could do that. I wouldn't recommend it. I did, that is most certainly unique though. But I do wanna caution you, if you are going to go this route, make sure your efficient actually knows what they're doing. We've done a couple ceremony videos here recently. I highly recommend you check those out. We got a whole playlist covering ceremony specifically. But if they've never done this before, might I strongly encourage you send them direction of Mark Allen Grolo, who's over here on YouTube with the Unboring Wedding. He's an efficient who teaches people how to have unboring wedding ceremonies, like teaches your efficient how they can do that efficiently. Efficiently. Do you, you see what I did there? Okay, just like make sure they have a script to follow and you've talked to them. You can be unique with it, just like parameters, okay? Okay, this next one might be one of my favorite unique ideas to do at a ceremony of all time, and that is to have a social media minute or a photo minute, whatever you want to call it. If your intent is to have an unplugged ceremony, first of all, you have to be very clear about that because a lot of people are just kind of like ignoring those signs these days. They treat them like California street stop signs. They just roll right on through those bad boys. They're like, that doesn't apply to me, thank you. But for those that are honoring the rule and are not taking any photos, sometimes it is a little fun to offer them a minute of taking photos. Um, and this is something you can talk to your efficient about and have them make the announcement of, all right, ladies and gentlemen, before the ceremony starts, like no photos, but don't worry, we'll give you an opportunity to take one later. 
And then later happens and they go, all right, ladies and gentlemen, get out your cell phones, your DSLRs, your iPads, and get to photo snapping, ready, set, go. And you guys can pose, you can have fun with it, you can kiss each other, you can do whatever you want. You can have the wedding party throw their hands up in the air, like make it epic, make it fun, make it silly, encourage your efficient to make it fun and make it entertaining. Also, I think I mentioned this in the other video, but I want, it bears repeating here specifically. If your efficient can then take their camera and turn it on selfie mode. Get a photo of themselves, you and all of your guests, like taking it backwards, like taking it from the top of the aisle backwards is such a fun photo. You will absolutely treasure that for forever. And uh, I also think I mentioned this in that video as well, but again, it bears repeating. If someone can bring an Instax camera, you're efficient or just having one up there, take a photo of you and your fiance. Like you take a photo of your fiance and they take a picture of you and then you could have them printed up like a little photo of what their view was on your wedding day. Like how cute is that? And you can use that as like a cake topper later on in the night. Look at me. I am an overflowing waterfall of creative ideas right now. Just a little in stacks. Just say it's super cute. Okay. Next, break the fourth wall. If you were not a theater kid, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But if you are, you're like, yes. Yes, I understand. The fourth wall is presumably the barrier between the performers and the audience, right? Where you are performing and you do not look at the audience. You do not talk to the audience because you are performing, right? You are putting on a show. And sometimes that's what your wedding ceremony starts to feel like. You were putting on a show and there was a fourth wall and it feels weird and you don't want to break it. And you're like, I can't look at the people. They can't know that I know that they're here. <laughs> you know? So to intentionally go out of your way to break that wall can actually really soften the experience and endear the audience, your guests, more to what's going on. So instead of just treating them as spectators and you guys as the show, try to find ways to interact or have a call and repeat. Or if your efficient asks the crowd for their blessing, you know, or if they will come alongside you and the crowd goes, we will, you know, but usually with a little bit more enthusiasm. <laughs> Anytime you can lean into that, pull in their responses, engage with them, have your efficient make eye contact with them, you and your fiance look out at the crowd, smile, wave, interact with them, be silly, make them a part of that moment instead of just a spectator. will make your ceremony so much more intentional and so much more unique. The next tip is all the rage over on the clock app. <laughs> and that is having a live artist at your ceremony. So fun. So cute. Talk about an irreplaceable piece of art. Like what an incredible thing for them to just like, like really fast and just live painting at your wedding. Yes, ma'am. That's incredible. It is a little spendy. Okay. It's definitely very spendy. And usually from what I understand, they like start the painting there, take a photo of whatever, and then bring it with them to the reception and finish it there so people can actually come up and take a look at it. So it's a much more interactive thing. It's less than just like a piece of art you're going to put on your wall and more of an experience for your guests to be a part of um, and something for you to take a look at later on your wedding day as well. So it has layers to it, which we love, like parfaits or ogres. Now, not everyone's going to have the budget for it, of course, but uh, if you are looking for a way to jazz up your ceremony and make it just a touch more unique, consider getting an artist. And last, but most certainly not least, because I'm sure you guys have plenty more ideas, which by the way, if you have unique ceremony ideas, please drop them. Whatever you've heard, if you've done it, if someone you know has done it, or you just heard through the grapevine, or you read it on a Reddit thread, let me know some unique ceremony ideas that you've seen down in the comments below. Y'all know I love hearing from you and I love hearing your ideas and what you've seen as well. The last unique idea that I have for you today though, is to create a unique exit from your ceremony. Now, traditionally, this is where people would throw the rice, right? We're not throwing the rice. The rice is bad. The rice is bad for the birds, okay? The rice is also a pain in the booty to get out of your hair and sweep, okay? So, no, we're not doing that. But we could be throwing uh, perhaps compostable confetti, right? Or dried flowers. Oh, I love the cones, you know, like the, the paper cones with the dried petals in them. It's really expensive, Dried flowers are super expensive, but then they're like tossing them at you gently. It's just charming, okay? It's charming, and I love it. It makes for very cute photos. Now, I actually did have a couple do this, and they didn't want to spend money on dried florals for everyone, so they actually focused on the people that were just closest to the aisle. <laughs> I was like, listen, it's fine. Go for it. But talk about a beautiful exit from your ceremony to have these things flying in the air and you guys ducking underneath them. Now, I already recorded two videos on 40 ceremony tips. This is one of them. I'm gonna include it in this one. I just don't know if the video has come out or not yet because <laughs> I don't know I'm scheduling them. But um, if you pause halfway down the aisle as you're exiting and for another kiss, imagine that with like flower petals, okay? 
with you guys embracing and kissing, maybe a little dip, you know what I'm saying? And the photographer gets that, and there's literally flying flowers. People are going to remember that stuff, okay? That sticks in their brain noggin. So that's what we have for this week's video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, if you have any unique ideas that you've seen, heard, or just made up on the spot, drop those in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, jump on down there, hit that like button if you want to hear more unique ideas. Maybe I'll borrow some of yours uh, down from the comments and toss them in another video at a later time. And subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride so you can plan easy and stress less because you deserve a stress-free wedding day. And until next time, bye guys!